Hey, what's going on everyone? This video, I told you I was gonna do some review, but apparently I am just full of lies and deception, and I just gotta teach you another way to reverse data. It's like we're in a game of Uno, and we're in a competition to see who can lay down the most reverse cards, and I am currently winning because this is, I think, my fourth way, but each way introduces a new way of thinking, new programming concept, so it's definitely good practice. So, what we're gonna do is we're going to print data, and you can slice this thing and when you do this, you can put the starting position and the ending position here, but you can actually put a third thing in here, and that is the step, the amount you wanna go each time or what direction you wanna go. So we could put two, for example. In doing this, it's going to skip every other element, but you can put negative numbers in here as well. When you put a negative one, it's actually going to put this list in opposite order. So this returns a shallow copy, so you can assign it to a new variable. You can replace the variable that we have, or you could even change the content of the list we currently have up at the top here. So that's what I'll do here. So I'm gonna get rid of the print, and we're going to use slicing to assign this to the whole list, like so. And before we run this, we're going to print data. Taking a look, you can see it is now in reverse order. So that's probably the simplest in terms of how much you have to write, and if you understand the syntax, then it's really simple. So we're pretty much just counting backwards from the list, and we're replacing the contents of the list by using the slice over here on the left. Again, I've told you this before, but when you do the slicing like this, it does not change the list, it just changes the content of the list. So you can print the ID of data, and you can do that before and after, and when you do this, you're going to get the same number twice. If you don't do the slicing, then it's going to actually replace data with a new list, and we're gonna get a new object ID. Right now, it's not a huge issue either way, but later on when you're working with functions or if you have aliases for a list, that can come up and bite you, so just be really careful on whether or not you want to replace the actual list or just replace the content inside of the list. Okay, so I believe that is the absolute final way I'm gonna be teaching you how to reverse a list. I don't know what got me all obsessed about this, but I learned the first way, then I was like, heck, we could do this in so many different ways. And every time I did another one, I was like, oh, I got an even better idea. Or I'd find some solution online. There's lots of different examples of reversing lists on Stack Overflow and the internet. And it seems anytime I'd look up a way to reverse a list, I'd find two different other ways to reverse a list. So there's just endless ways of doing something so simple. Now, I promise you guys, that everything I got in my soul, that in the next video, we're gonna review everything in the last section of videos. So we're gonna make sure we solidify all of that knowledge. I'll see you then.